We're about two years away from the reset button being hit with Formula One cars. The FIA wants to change the engine regulations around a bit, which will not only hopefully reset the pecking order, for want of a better phrase, but also try and reduce things down a little bit in terms of car size, because... Well, things have gone a bit too far in recent years, haven't they? I've covered the stuff surrounding the engines a couple of times before, but well, screw it, let's do a recap just in case you've forgotten or aren't quite aware as to what is going to be happening or should be happening. The FIA wants to change the construction of the engines so that the electrical output to ICE output ratio is around 50-50, and it wants to ditch the MGU-H because no road-going car outside of things like the AMG Project 1 and other hypercars based off Formula 1 designs don't have an MGU-H. And it's also hoped that this will reduce the cost of an engine. Sorry, a power unit. Saying power unit instead of engine is like saying sports entertainment instead of professional wrestling. Anyway, smaller engine construction might help reduce the overall weight and size of the car too, as well as the costs. Although it has to be said that these new rules for 2026 haven't even been signed off yet. The engine manufacturers don't know what they're getting in for. They don't even know what they're building. And really, they need to start getting on top of this now. Or three months ago, ideally. The problem is though, this isn't as simple as just removing the MGUH, slapping bigger and more powerful batteries in, altering some code on a computer, and sending the cars on their way. Because as Karun Chandhok explained on Sky Sports' own podcast recently, there are some other complexities that are presenting themselves, and it looks like the chassis of the car in which this new setup is going to be in will have to be changed to cope. And there's more complexities on top of that too. Currently, Formula 1 cars are exploiting ground effect. Air rushes through tunnels underneath the car, and as it goes through these tunnels, the air accelerates, which at the same time reduces air pressure. This low pressure pocket helps suck the car down to the ground, and in theory reduces over-reliance on topside aero that, again, in theory, should make things easier for any car following. Because in days gone by, there was this constant talk of aero wash, tyres being destroyed through understeering dirty air, and so on, and so on, and so on. In 2026, there's talk of possibly allowing some active aero. What this means is the cars will be able to run an absolute boatload of front and rear wing in the corners, but when they get out on a straight, computer wizardry kicks in and the wing flaps are reduced electronically to reduce drag. And then you've got things like DRS on top of that that can still be used to facilitate overtaking. So, for example, the teams could be running Monaco-like levels of aero at Monza so that the cars can go through Ascari and the two Lesmos pretty well, and then have it all taken off on the long straights to get them over 220 miles an hour. However, this has not gone down well in the simulations. Simulators are great. My channel started with them. Alright, they're just advanced video games, but I enjoy them. I use models contained within the simulators and games to show you cars I can't otherwise get pictures of, or if I need to show you a close-up of a livery or some sort of innovative part of the car. Blown diffusers, double diffusers, and the F-duct all spring to mind. I showed you all of those in R-Factor. Or I can use them to show you how utterly unhinged a modern F1 car would be around a certain track, like I did when there was all that talk of just go to Brands Hatch when they needed tracks to fill the calendar back in 2020. Although I should be putting illustrative purposes only on the bottom of these kinds of displays because, as people are quick to always point out, it's a video game. I know that, in the same way I know wrestling's fake. The teams have currently got access to something simply called Fanjo, which is a baseline representation of what they think the cars are going to look like in 2026, even though they've not actually confirmed what the cars in 2026 are going to be like. So GG FIA! Sources have told Autosport that there is a massive problem with the ideas that they've currently got in mind, to the point where the cars are undrivable. Not, oh my god, this is different to what I'm used to, it needs X, Y, and Z doing to sort it out. It's more, even the best driver with the best reactions in the world is going to be in the wall. This is literally undrivable. At the point of writing, Fanjo appears to just have an active rear wing. The wing can be run pretty high through the corners, and then on the straights it can be turned down via a computer. With the rear wing in its low drag configuration and the front wing cranked up, drivers have been spinning in a straight line and are also unable to take the slightest of slight kinks to the left or right without crashing, because of what can only be described as the most insane aero imbalance known to man. So to paint a picture of all of this, let's take a quick physics lesson. And this can be tested by yourself in your favourite racing simulator. I've chosen this particular one because this is what I use for almost all of my model close-ups, and it looks the prettiest, so I might as well stick with it. 
I used to do this all the time on the Jeff Crammon Grand Prix games for the fun of it, and to be honest, these simpler pre-hybrid cars are easier to get the desired effect with. You need the car to be balanced, otherwise the car isn't going to handle well or perform well. Too much overall drag and you'll have great cornering speed but go too slow in a straight line. Too little downforce and you'll find it incredibly difficult to get through the corners, but you'll be a rocket ship in a straight line. Now there are other ways of setting the car up through suspension settings, tow, camber, rake and other bits and pieces for extra mechanical grip or to get the most from the diffuser, but we're only going to be focusing on top side aero here. You can balance the wings to suit you and the track. Somewhere like Monza you might take all the rear wing off and set the front to have just enough so you can actually get some turn in without scrubbing the front end across the road. At Monaco you might crank it all the way up to generate extra grip in the slow speed corners, but the second the aero balance is too far out, you're going to run into some problems. If the balance is too far rearward then the rear end is producing far too much downforce relative to the front and the front end won't turn. The car will actually be generating lift at the front, although it's not quite a Scudo Pikes Peak in Gran Turismo 3 style wheelies. But what they found in the simulators is the opposite. There's too much aero weight on the front end. So what I've done is I've set this car up to have maximum front wing and all the rear wing taken off, and I'm going to lob it into Cops Corner at Silverstone to show you what the effect of that might be. Hello, it's Editing Aiden here. Uh, slight issue with doing the demonstration that a set of Corsa just does not want to load for me. I can load at the showroom, no problem, but actually getting into a driving session doesn't want to play ball, so I'll just do it in a different one instead. Soz. Because much like it was the other way around, the rear end is actually slightly lifted off the ground. It's obviously connected to the ground because you're still able to go forwards, but you can do this at home by yourself. You can just run your finger lightly across your arm like that, and it's, well, it's pretty easy. What you want is you want to push it in and generate that extra grip. I mean, that actually slightly hurts. I might have overdone it slightly, but hopefully you get the point. What the teams have found is that this aero imbalance is three times what it currently is with DRS open. Try to go through cops with DRS open, you're not making it through. Now imagine that aero imbalance being three times as bad. It's so bad with so little grip and so much engine power that the drivers in the simulator had to ease off so much that they were slower than Formula 2 cars. So the FIA is now thinking, okay, we need to have the front and rear wing both doing some sort of magic to effectively balance things out and help keep the cars safe. But the teams can't do anything until they know what chassis they're going to be building, with the engine regulations still not being signed off. Christian Horner has expressed fears about teams having some sort of bodge job car because it's been left too late to build something around the engine. Because, as Curran Chandok has mentioned on the Sky Sports podcast, this is probably the first time ever that the rules regarding the chassis will be determined by how the FIA wants the engines built, as opposed to the team simply building the car to the rules and then sticking the engine in afterwards. My question is, why is it now the April of 2024 and still nothing signed off? We had the hybrid regulations announced in 2011. Yeah, 2011. I had to way back machine my way through the FIA's website, yeah alright I used an external link from Wikipedia, but the press release for the change to the hybrids was made on the 29th of June 2011. It's the 12th of April 2024 and still no confirmation on engine designs yet, although they want it all signed off by June. And these engine regulation changes were designed to attract in the likes of Audi, Porsche and other teams like that. But now we're, what, 23 months away from testing in 2026. Ferrari, Red Bull slash Ford slash whoever, Honda, Mercedes and Alpine, assuming they're still around at this point, well, Renault anyway, don't know what they're building. So we could end up having another 2014 at this rate. Remember the early days of hybrid with the teams having engine, turbo and MGU failures quite often? 
okay, back then it was uncharted territory. It was going to have a few kinks that needed ironing out. And Honda with McLaren were memed left, right and centre because of the way the engines kept going pop. But if there are problems with this regulation set, then we can almost certainly start pointing fingers and saying, you didn't give them enough time. Not only that, but Verstappen has got some concerns that the 2026 regulations, if they go as predicted, will be based around who has the most engine power rather than who can get the aero right. And on top of that, there are concerns that the teams might only have about 10 seconds of maximum electric boost. So storing and deploying might end up being a mission, with Horner saying they might have to downshift on a straight to recover energy. As someone pointed out in a comment section somewhere, a Eurofighter can't stay in the air without a small army of computers constantly altering the flight surfaces. Legitimately, if a computer crashes on a Eurofighter, it drops out of the sky. That's how much it relies on computers because without them, the pilot is going to have to check for traffic, check for an enemy, assuming it's in a dogfight, check this computer, this computer, this instrument, that instrument, and so on. And actually, the pilot can't react fast enough to make all the changes necessary to keep that plane in the air. Will Formula 1 cars need something similar so that the driver isn't going at 180 miles an hour with his eyes locked on a gauge on his steering wheel? At the risk of sounding like a broken record, this aero stuff baffles me. Not because I don't understand aero, oh, I mean I don't understand aero, but it goes a little bit deeper than that. It seems that the FIA is trying to change the formula and do utterly unhinged things with it, while preserving lap times. The cars are going to be the fastest in the world around a circuit, whatever you do with them. A Formula 1 car is 10 seconds a lap faster than a Formula 2 car at Barcelona. You can sacrifice 3 or 4 seconds a lap and still have them be a decent way faster than the feeder series or IndyCar. I'd happily take 4 seconds slower than the previous generation of car if it means the cars can actually do some racing with not too much dirty air interfering with the dude behind, but the FIA is running out of time. It needs to sign these things off pretty soon. Otherwise, it's going to be another case of Formula 1 shooting itself in the foot that will just completely ruin the reputation of the sport if the cars keep breaking down every week. But I'd like to know what you think. So then, this has been something happening in the world of motorsport, and this has been my opinion on that thing. If this thing has made you think things about the thing, then like this thing so I know I did a good job with the thing. And for more things like this, hit the subscribe button thing, and also ring the bell thing so you never miss out on any thing that I do around here. 500 subscribers to go until 100,000. At current rate of progress, should be there by the end of this month. Massive thanks to the fine folk at Patreon that continue to support me at a more personal level. And if you want to help keep things running around here, a link to Patreon is in the description, along with links to Discord, socials, and other bits and bobs that you might want or need to know. Or the super thanks down there if you want to buy me a coffee, or memberships if you want to spam Roberto Moreno emojis in the comments. So until next time, I've been Aidan Maud. Have a great day wherever you are, and goodbye. <laughs>